Meet Emma, the mayor of the city of Titinati. Her city is very crowded and is quickly growing and developing. However, this rapid economic growth contributes to climate change, due to the increasing amounts of greenhouse gases the city emits. As mayor, Emma deals with floods as one of the impacts of climate change. Flooding affects the day-to-day -day activities of the city and damages properties, and even claims lives in extreme cases. This does not only slow down growth and development, but can wipe away years of progress made. The good news is that actions can be taken to lessen the impacts of climate change on cities. The integrated climate risk management approach is a holistic understanding to strengthen cities' resilience towards the impacts of climate change. The concept entails risk prevention, retention and transfer, preparedness, response and recovery. These five steps are interlinked and work best when the activities are coordinated together with city authorities and inhabitants. 1. Risk prevention. This involves identifying a hazard in a particular area and checking how the city infrastructure and day-to-day -day activities are exposed to that hazard. This will determine what can be done to prevent damage if there is a flood. Before the rainy season, the mayor can invest in widening and cleaning drains. Furthermore, she can make and enforce local laws to ensure that people do not build in flood-prone areas. These are all examples of actions that can be taken to prepare a city to reduce its risk of flooding. 2. Retention and transfer. The reality is, even if all mitigation and adaptation measures to climate change are taken, a city may still face the risk of flooding. It is also possible that measures to mitigate or adapt to climate change may simply not be taken because they are too expensive. In both cases, this unavoidable risk is called residual risk. This type of risk can be either retained or transferred. Emma has the possibility to transfer them to the insurance sector, which increases the financial stability of the city of Titinati. 3. Preparedness as the name suggests, Emma must prepare for floods. As mayor, Emma can take out pre-disaster financing, that is, financing before a hazard strikes, to ensure that funding will be available immediately after a heavy rainfall. This money can be used to provide emergency relief to people who have been affected or support the reconstruction of public assets. As mayor, Emma can invest in an early warning system that can alert people before a heavy rainfall. Furthermore, she can align her city's climate risk management strategy, put in place measures to protect the city's critical infrastructure, and work with relevant agencies to design a contingency plan to respond to a disaster. The contingency plan will require money to be prepared, and this can be obtained through pre-disaster financing. 4. Response in the event a flood actually happens, emergency search and rescue for individuals who may be caught up in the flood must be done. Emergency food and clothing, medical support and temporary housing may be provided in coordination with relevant agencies. The absence of accessible finance may make these services either slow or not happen at all. This may result in an increase in loss of lives and property. Payouts of certain insurance products can address these needs and can reach the affected within 10 days after the disaster. And 5. Recovery The road to recovery can be long and difficult, but with the innovative financial assistance it can be quicker and easier. With possible payouts from climate risk insurance, Emma can build back, hopefully better, bring the city back to its normalcy, and strengthen its resilience if there are any future unfortunate events. This can be done by examining the affected areas and repairing infrastructure in a smarter way that prevents these damages from happening again. To sustain and accelerate the recovery process, investment in education should be made. The campaign should educate the people living in the city to, for example, remembering to regularly clear drains and practice proper disposal of waste. In conclusion, cities, as engines of growth, development and culture, must adopt an integrated climate risk management approach if resilience to climate change is to be strengthened. 
risk transfer solutions in combination with other risk management and especially risk reduction approaches have the possibility to significantly reduce risk and make cities safe, productive and resilient.